Let's now switch back to uh, Eclipse. And how do we launch the debugger? Let's say we want to uh, debug, let's say the uh, console application first, and I'll also show you how you can debug the uh, GUnit test. Let's do one by one. Let's open maybe sequence app number one. You can do, uh, you can try to maybe uh, slow motion execute uh, sequence app uh, application two as an exercise. Okay, let's say we do this. Let's max, uh, let's do this. Uh, very important. I already set something so-called a breakpoint over here. You can see there's a small circle over here, but let me just er uh, erase it, okay? So what you should do is, uh, you should really go to the very first point that you want to start executing your code. Let's say for now, we just choose the very first line. For a console application, the main method will be the entry point of execution as we said. So I'm just going to put at the first line over here. You can see line number 10. You can see the blue. there's a blue uh, area over here, like a blue bar over here. So uh, around the code line. So you simply just uh, double click on that. You can see there's a blue uh, blue circle over here. They said it's a line breakpoints. Okay, that's what, uh, what you should do. Later on, excuse me. Later on, once you get more advanced, you're you're going to maybe choose where to put a breakpoint. I'll try to maybe show you uh, example by example every week, so you really get uh, more experience about how to use debugger. But just for for the first example. Let's put the breakpoint around the first line. Typically, uh, in general, you can put as many breakpoints as you, as you like, but let's just put one as a first example. So now we want to launch the debugger so that we can now uh, actually see how we can actually do the step over, step into, and etc. Okay. So now let's now try to do over here uh, how to launch the debugger. Okay. What we will do is we're going to uh, right click on uh, sequence app one. Okay, there are two ways to do it, right? You want to make sure that you double click on the class, make sure the current class is really this, you want to debug. You can either say right click, and then you can say debug as Java application. This is more recommended because you can you can be sure about which one you want to debug. Another, another way to do it is if you already double click on the class, so the current focus is really this tab, right? In that case, you can simply click on the bug button here. You can say debug sequence uh, sequence app one. Just double check the name of the class. Make sure you're debugging the right class. Okay. All right. Let me just use the way I really uh, recommend. Right click on the class and then I'll say debug as Java application. Right. If you do that for the first time, it's going to ask you whether you want to switch to the debug perspective. Basically, remember we talked about Java perspective before. So this icon over here is the Java perspective. And there's a bug button here. That's a debugging perspective, right? We got, we now we got two perspectives to, uh, to worry about. You can think about it's like a two modes. So now for the debugging perspective, you can simply say switch. If you don't really want to be bothered by this confirmation uh, panel over here, you can simply click on remember my decision. That's okay. You know, for me, I can leave it just uh, as a very explicit reminder of me. So once we say switch, we're, we're going to switch from Java into debug. If I say switch over here, so now you can see, uh, let's see what's going to happen over here, right? You can see this is the a different uh, debugging perspective. So let me show you uh, some very important things to really uh, make sure you got it before we uh, start debugging. If you simply, uh, you should really get, uh, for example, over here, you got variables, breakpoints, and expressions. So these are the uh, panels by default in case you miss them, but right? you don't really have them. This is how you get it back. So you can simply go to window and go to perspective, and then you can first of all reset the perspective. If you do that, it's just going, uh, just say reset. It's just going to show uh, just the same because this is simply the default. I think that's useful enough. And then you will simply get a variable's breakpoint and expression. But sometimes if you really want to just add it, customize the, uh, the panel, you can also go for window and show view. And now you can see breakpoints over here. As soon as you click on that, you're going to show the breakpoints, right? And also you're going to uh, need also variables, is, which is also very uh, useful. And another one is called expressions. So you got breakpoints, you got expressions, you got variables. So these are the ones you, you will need. But currently, since they're they are all present, so you don't need. In case they are absent, you can click on that to add it. All right. And then also we got console problems, etc. So that's good enough, right? All right, that's about the debug perspective. So now we are over here, right? So now the first experiment I want to do to get together with you is to simulate what we said before. Let's say this is our console application. I'm just going to say step over, all over. I'm here. 
step over, step over, step over, all the way to step over. Even though I'm calling some method, I'm not going to step into. I'm just going to say step over, step over, step over. Let's see what's going to happen. All right. Let's now go back over here. And then uh, one thing to really note over here, you, uh, you want to maybe want to zoom in in your computer. You can see apart, uh, in addition to the breakpoint, there is some arrow over here to say that this is where we are for the execution. And the important thing is we have not yet executed line number 10. We have not yet. So whenever the arrow over here is pointing to this particular line, that means we are, we are right in the beginning, right before we try to execute this line, right before. Okay. So now uh, notice one thing here. You can see the variables over here. Since we are trying to declare input, but since we haven't executed this line just yet, so now you can see the uh, input here doesn't really exist under the variables. Okay. So now let's say step over. How, how can you step over? You can see here we got icons over here. The first one here is called uh, step into. So this is step over. And notice the difference over here, right? So now you got basically. Okay, let me see this. So I think, uh, let me just look at that a little bit more closely. So this is the step over you will see. And also for the step into, this is what you will see. This is the step into. Currently, we have not really stepped into any uh, method call just yet. So this is why another one over here. So this is actually step out uh, was well, step return. I call it step, step out, but in Eclipse, it's called step return. Similar. Okay. Another one is called step return over here you will see on the Eclipse. So this is step out or step return. Just get rid of, uh, get uh, get away, get out of the uh, the current method call we are tracing. So these are the three. So now let me simply say step over. Let's predict what's going to happen. As soon as I say step over here, it's going to execute this line. And the consequence is we're going to see the input variable appearing over here, right? So if I say step over, you can see now the input variable is now here, right? You can see, right? Don't, uh, if you click on that, it's going to show you what the state is for that variable. But you don't need to worry about the object variable. We're going to talk about it later in the course, okay? And then uh, we're going, uh, going to step... Uh, so now we are right before executing this particular line. That's why you see in the console over here, we don't see any output just yet, okay? So now if I say step over here, what do we expect to see? If we say step over from here, you can see the blue arrow over here. So that means currently the execution is right before we try to execute this line over here, right? So if we say step over, we're going to actually uh, print this line to the console, right? If I say step over over here, now you can see exactly the console actually got this line over here, right? So now we are here. It's now right before we actually try to read the input from the user, right? So now what we should do is we should really enter something uh, to the console uh, to the uh, to the console by keyboard. So for example, I might say the first term is simply three, and then I say enter, right? But it has not been read just yet into FT. You can see there's no FT over here just yet. However, if I say step over, you can say FT. You can see FT has been uh, storing the value that we just entered, which is three, right? You can see that it's the complete step by step by step visualization of what's happening for your code. This can really confirm if you really understand the behavior of your code correctly. Let's do that very quickly just to finish, right? So now we are here, the blue arrow is exactly here right before we try to print out this message over here. So I'm just going to step over. So now, as soon as I say step over, what should we see? We should really see this particular prompt message here, enter the common difference. If I say step over, enter the common difference, right? And now we are now blue arrows here right before we actually try to uh, read this input from the user. Well, let's now type, we are the user. So now we say two and enter, right? And then we're just going to say step over again. So now you can see the D has just been introduced over here. So now we got three and two. So under the variables over here, it's going to show all the local variables you have in, inside the current context. So we got FT, we also got D. FT is of value three over here. You can see the value here, or you can see from here as well. Also, we got D. The value is simply just two. All right. 
So now let's uh, step over again. So now you can see we are now right. Uh, we are now line number twenty-five, right before we try to execute the method call over here. But now the first case, we just want to step over. Okay. So we simply say step over. So what do we expect to see? What we expect to see is number one, we're going to execute this particular uh, method without pausing. And then that method there is going to return some value and store back to the string result uh, sequence, sick over here. Currently, we don't have the SEQ. We don't have the SEQ in the under the variables, but it will be once we say step over. Okay. So now let's say step over over here. You can see SEQ over here is the string value over here, right? Exactly what we expected. But later on in your second run, I'll let you show you how you can step into this particular method call. But we'll do that in just a moment. Okay. And now similarly, so now we want we are now uh, the blue arrow is uh, uh, in the beginning of li line twenty six, right before we try to execute this line. So now we're going to ex uh, step over, which will actually ex uh, call this method without pausing, return the value thirty five, and back to the sum. And then that one there is going to uh, going to show in the variables once we say step over. So if you say step over again, you can now you can see the sum is now thirty five, right? Hopefully everything makes sense to you. That's really the beauty about using debugger. You can really uh, try to see exactly how your code is executed. It has very uh, two good purposes. Number one, it can confirm your understanding. Number two, when things go wrong, that's that's the uh, best way to really find out exactly what's wrong. That's something I will try to show you not just today, but maybe also uh, later in the tutorial. Finally. We are now at this point here, right before we try to execute this line over here. So now, if we say step over, we should see one more line in the console over here. So if I say step over, you can see sequence has sum thirty five, right? If you say step over, that's going to uh, execute this. That's okay. And now we are now at the end of the main method for the console application, right? Remember, we're starting from here, and we simply step over one, uh, one by one by one until here. Pretty much like in the uh, in the diagram I show, we start from here all the way, stepping over to the end. Now we are here, and then eventually, once we say step over, it's going to tell us we are done, right? Now we are done. You can see all the three buttons over here are disabled. That means the debug is done. So now, how can we switch back to the Java perspective? A very common mistake is you can see we are still in the debug. Debugging debug perspective, but you may just start editing your code again. That's not the way to go. Please make sure whenever you want to go back to editing your code, you want to switch back to Java perspective by clicking on the Java over here. Click on that. So now you're back to where we were, right? With the package package explorer, outline, problems, console, and etc. Right? So this uh what I just demonstrated to you was a complete run about using step over. I'm gonna show you now how to use a second run but with a step into.